Gado. It's only been a year since the Battle of Sword Valley. How? How did the numbers grow so quickly? Are their numbers too great even for you, Gado? Otharon. Medic Sharla, here are your new orders. You and Juju are to ready the evac ships. You will be in charge of the evacuation. Uh, but... You must realize the ships can only carry so many. We must stay behind and fight to protect those who remain in Colony 6. Uh... I'll be fine. I'll be able to keep my mind on the battle, knowing you're safe. <sighs> Promise me. Sharla. Promise that you'll meet us outside the colony. I... Just make sure you get out of here alive. Yeah. I promise. Don't worry. Gado, a promise is a promise. And until I see you again, I will protect everyone. No, let me protect everyone. Shala! I keep them real safe inside my belly. Shala! Juju! <laughs> Juju! <sighs> Where are you? <sighs> hey there. Are you all right? The sleeping princess awakes. Had us worried there for a minute. How long have I been out? Huh? How long have I been unconscious? Four hours, I'd say. Uh, I've got to get out of here. Hold up. Mind if we go with you? You're going to bust into their base, right? We want a piece of them too. Really? Truth be told, we were going to leave without you. But the thing is, I get roughed up a lot, and we don't know anyone else who can use ether. I... Thank you both. It's been a while, and it's just... I never imagined I would go back to Colony 6 like this. I'm sorry. Lost myself for a minute. We can get to Colony 6 from the valley where Juju was taken. It's this way. Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. Wow, there's a lot to unpack between the opening of this and the end, especially of last episode, with the fight with um, Mysterious Face. And where to even start on that? Um, first off, criticisms. Apparently Metal Face is actually called Metal Face. I found that ridiculous the first time I played this because, you know, we referred to him as the Mechon with the Metal Face, but then the one we just fought was, like, referred to him as Metal Face, so apparently that's his name. Uh, it could be worse. In in Japan, he's called Blackface, uh, and they changed that for uh, for English markets for obvious reasons. Um, in the same way, so he's so Metal Face is called Blackface, and then the one we just fought, who we saw referred to as Mysterious Face, uh, is called Bronze Face. It's just a colour system, is all it is. But obviously, that translates badly. Um, but yeah, that's 
I'll always point out the parts where this game started to grab my attention even more. It's usually when Engage the Enemy or an even cooler bit of music plays. Um, but certainly, yeah, the, the Metal Faces attack on the con colony, I was like, I'm interested. And that scene with the Mysterious Face, I was like, oh, now I'm definitely interested. Because, you know, the Mechon being, you know, the Borg of, like, must destroy all the humans eating them kind of uh, as a power source matrix style or something like that. I was like, yeah, that's a fairly standard story. Seeing the robot enemies have very clear personality, like, I must praise Me uh, Myster Mysterious Face's voice actor is fucking going for it. And it's just not, I really expected if they ever spoke that it'd be like, crush, kill, destroy. So that was just like, I was like, I need, I need to know more at this point. So this was... I would say at this point I was 60 to 70, not probably 75% hooked. Um, couple more episodes and we'll get to the 100% hooked point where I was like, nah, I have to finish this game, now. I need to know. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we, we are very close there. On that point, this episode and the next couple of episodes are going to be side content around kind of Gower playing Bionis Leg. To the point where... Our main quest, as it says at the bottom, is um, yeah, they have a chance to get to Colony 6. They need to get to Colony 6 if they have any chance of rescuing Juju. Going to Colony 6 and rescuing Juju is not going to happen. This is episode 12. That's not going to happen until the beginning of episode 15. So if side content is not interesting to you, which is fine. There's a shit ton of it in this game. I appreciate that. Uh, if you just want to know what's going on with the story, skip to episode 15. Uh, if episode 15 isn't out yet, sorry, wait. Um, because we're just going to be doing side stuff for a while, because we've got some more stuff to do here, and we've also got more stuff that's available now to us back in Colony 9. So with that, um, firstly, yeah, you're starting to see perhaps why Juju is such an infuriating character. He just makes stupid decisions and, and gets into trouble and gets abducted fucking repeatedly. Um, but, um, Shala is, 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 is now... Hanging around for the foreseeable future, which is very cool. Uh, and on that note, someone learned an art. Uh, Shulk has learned an art. Have I? Oh, of course. <laughs> Idiot. Shulk has learned an art. Yeah, he's learned Monado Speed, which it didn't even fire up in that fight once. But yeah, it just gives someone a boost, a huge boost, actually, to um, their... Not ether. Um, agility. Um, we'll actually give that a level just so it's, it's ready to roll. We need it. Same with shield. And then I'll just level it to various arts. So with that, um, a couple of things to do here. First off, um, I want to well. buy some arts books here because I said I was going to buy these when I went through Charles' arts and that was quite some time ago. So we can buy, ooh, we can buy an art book for Stream Edge and Warswing, both of which is really handy. Um, why you can buy multiple art books is, is baffling to me. Um, but there's a lot here that's useful. Air Slash, useful. Shadow Eye I quite like. Heal Bullet, yep. Um... She's got thun yes, Thunderbullet. Particularly Metal Blast? No? Oh, that's a bit more annoying, but Thunderbullet's her, like, Charlotte's go-to attacking art, so... Fortunately, unlike in the original version of the game, you'd have to go into your inventory and then use those art books. If you just go into arts, it'll just say, hey, these ones are ready to fire up now, which is very cool. Had I already got Warswing's art book, or did it just not show me that for different reasons? Either way, um, yeah, Stream Edge is a really handy one, because, yeah, it's... The fan area of effect is really nice, and also it's a very easy way to break. With that, we now want to return one of our quests to Gorman, who appears to have disappeared. Oh, he's only here at night time, isn't it? Well, he's only here at night time. I think he goes out in the daytime. There we go. You brought our clothes back. No more fretting over garments. I'm glad everything worked out. All's well that ends well. We oldies and kids could never have done this by ourselves. We really appreciate what you've done. Take this tiny token of thanks. And that completes Thieving Monsters. Gets us some armor as well for our struggles. Right, up next, um, we have one more quest to actually handle, which is the Material Quest 1, where we need to kill some brogs. Um, actually, we've also got a, some unique monsters as well. We Basically, we've got stuff we want to do on the upper level of Bionis Leg. So... Let's start by heading back to Spiral Valley, the source of Juju's kidnapping. First off, Immovable Gonzalez is there, and he's level 90, so stay the fuck away from him, obviously. Um, beyond that, right, there should be... 
I'm actually going to just fire up the uh, quest tracker on this just to make sure I, I get it right. Um, because I swear they should be basically here, but they are clearly not basically here. Time oh, they're at daytime only, aren't they? Um, and my notes even say, um, look for Bronx there in the daytime, in capital letters. Um, so, <laughs> clearly this is something that's fucked me over before, and yet here I am. Um, so, there we go. Big Brog, let's go. That's one Brog leg meat already. That has two legs, so why, why it doesn't drop more leg meat is always slightly frustrating, but hey, let's kill the second Big Brog. You could be a Big Brog too. Hey! That one had no legs. <laughs> Not so much a Big Brog as a big slug, apparently. That one was also a slug. So yeah, there is one... I think it was just night time when we were last here. There is one over near the... So that wooden thing over there is also the entrance to Colony 6 area. Um, but it's easy actually just to farm these guys by warping back to the Spiral Valley. Didn't get that to start affinity, so gonna try again. There we go. I think we're in it. There we go. Um, but this should have some... Yeah, there we go. And that's some good gubs with it. So that finishes off Material Crest number one. While we're up here, um, we have some more business. We actually have a challenge quest um, that's up here. Um, because there is a unique monster called Trainer Harmelon up here. And he's not one of these. So, Trainer Harmelon is a Turkin. And as the name Trainer might imply, he's a particularly annoying kind of Turkin that uses... So, right, Turkins are never quite made clear. Ah, yes, there he is. Trainer Harmelon with his pair of Berserk Ardens. Uh, yes, it's never quite made clear in this. Um, but certainly... Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has Turkins in, and in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, they're sentient. They can talk and stuff like this. In this, uh, they can do chain attacks and stuff like that, but they never speak or anything like that, so it's unclear whether they are whether they are actually truly, you know, sentient beings or not. There are some things later on in the game that very much imply they are not, but they... Oh, these guys also, because they're a party, they can do dark chain attacks, so... Let's not let that happen. Uh, Shadow Eye, please. I don't don't want this aggro. Do not want. There we go. I'm gonna backslash and get the aggro back immediately. But there we go. Oh, he's dead. Brilliant. And we've nearly got a chain attack. So let's uh, just get ready to. There we go. Let's finish him with the chain attack. That's one of the quotes that Shulk says. I didn't just come out with that. So backslash. Oh. Uh, may as well do Metal Blast to actually extend the break duration, which will extend the duration of any topple we inflict on it, which I'm going to do here. And yes. So, let's Buster here, and on the off chance we get an additional extension, Charlotte will get some kind of times three thing. Which we do! So she have times three Thunderbolt, which is pretty good, because it's two hits. But, as she said, that's Scorching Hot. Right, here's an annoying thing. When you start really chaining chain attacks like that, who knows if that would have gone on? Um, we'll never know, because Charlotte's gun got hot, and so that just removes her from the chain attack, and just cancels the chain attack if it's on her turn, which it was there. Shala's lack of a talent art and replacing it with like a negative talent art? Uh, I'm never going to stop them. Okay, I will stop complaining about that. Um, but for now, it's, it's, a, it's a deeply annoying thing. Ooh. I think Ryan has some less good versions of those steady things on. Um, oh no, it's the warrior queases he's got. The steady queases. They're better, I guess. Remind me what good footing does. Uh, increases blowdown resistance. I've not come across anything with blowdown yet, but there we go. Well, it's, it's, it's better defense, and it has a gem, which the other one doesn't have, so we should probably go for that. So, with that, uh, let's see how we're doing with the Collectopedia. There we go. As I suspected, we've actually got the vast majority of it done. Uh, I will... By the time... As I say, we've got three-ish episodes of... Three-ish, three exactly episodes of... Um, side stuff on Bionis Leg and around the place. When we finish that, so before we head to Colony... Um, Oop, is that paralysis? Interesting. I actually didn't pay attention to what I got for veg at all. Um, but yeah, by the time we're done here, I will obviously finish up the Collectopedia here, as I always will. Ooh, Pelt Bottom's uh, slotted version could be pretty good. Oh, I can't write. Here's a stupid thing my brain does, and it won't stop now. I can't read the word tarantula as tarantula anymore. Whenever I see it, my brain says, ah, tarantula. And I don't know why, and I can't make it stop. And it just it makes me hate myself every time, every time I see it. Ooh, those Pelt Bottoms are good. 
probably best going on Sharla. Yeah, they'll make the biggest impact on Sharla. Oh, what was she wearing before? And I forgot to take the ether gem off it. Um, there we go. Let's put the ether up on that one. Always ether up with Sharla. It just makes her better at everything she does. Like, um, because she ain't about the auto attack. She's about the ether arts. Though her auto attack is, is also ether stat based. So, quite frankly, that is her thing. Speaking of her thing, time to do something we've needed to do for a while. For a while. Speaking of gems, let's head to Gem Man's stall. All the way back to Colony 6. Nine, even. Fuck! Every time. Um, yeah, I'm just going to constantly get that wrong. Don't worry. Uh, I say don't worry. Just ignore it, I suppose. Um, but we can now craft gems with Sharla. And Sharla brings skills as an engineer and skills as a shooter. So, wow, also we've got a shit ton of crystals to start making things with. So, let's get some of these yellow ones together. So, as I say, the coloured crystals are probably better for making gems with, because they're more likely to have just the same effects on it. So, like here, there's no random crap being mixed in. We just have ether up and double attack up, and we're guaranteed to get both of them. So, Sharla's abilities. Um, she has the gentle bonus. The cylinder fills up more with a gentle flame. And as a shooter, and as an engineer, um, she's good with the medium flame, all right with a gentle flame, and crap with a strong flame. But look at the difference in the craft terms. Because of affinity, she gets 3 to 5. Shulk and Ryan now get 7 to 10. Ooh, we've got blue affinity. That actually means we can advance with Paolo and Noreen. We'll do that in a couple of episodes time. Um, and basically, you'll see this with more party members as we go along. Anyone's advantages in terms of like skills they have with gen crafting are just outpaced by the fact that Shulk and Ryan have, have better affinity, so get more craft turns. Um, so it's rare that I'm going to use anyone other than really Shulk as shooter and Ryan as um, as engineer, because then we get the strong flame, which means the qualities we've got, which are the ones I've selected from, you know, merging gems, uh, are more likely to go better. Shulk's ability to go into a fever um, just means we occasionally get um, boosts, like that. So that was a really nice one. And then we just get a double attack 16 and an ether up 15, because um, it divides it by 10, roughly. I think that's how the numbers work on it. Um... Oh, less good than that. Yeah, double attack 2, um, as in 2%. The one we've got built into one of Ryan's weapons has 10, and yeah, ether up 6. All right, 9. All right, not great, not terrible. But there is a use for Sharla, quite a good one, actually. Oh, wow, we've got a lot of attack stability cylinders. These must have come with from some very specific mech on. This is the nice thing about merging cylinders. We've only got one effect here, so hopefully we can send this effect to the fucking moon with Ryan. No, that wasn't amazing. But hey, we'll take it anyway. No harm in having gems. So, Charlotte's real advantage uh, comes on what I can only refer to as a guff run. Let's say we do something for whatever reason that ends up looking like this. I'm going to start even without anything hitting 100%. You got a lot of stuff there. Charlotte's thing, the cylinder gauge fills up more with a gentle flame. That combines quite nicely with Shulk, who's good with a gentle flame. If you've got a lot of crystals that just don't combine and you need to slap them together and do something, this massively increases your chance of making cylinders, which you can then take forward to, to real crafting. Um, so Sharla as a shooter and Shulk as engineer can be handy, because already there we've got... We actually didn't complete crafting, but we got two levels of the cylinder gauge, so we can at least turn lightning attack and first attack plus into cylinders, which we can then use. So... My advice, and it's basically what I'm going to do now for um, crafting, is just go through and follow like the game's recommendations to you know merge all the useful ones you can, um, and then like here for example, I've got a lot of them up. Uh, when you just get guff like that, do a Shulk and Charla run just to um, cylinderize something and make something useful. This is a good result. Oh, we got heat there, so that gives us a lightning attack 3, which is auto attack deals additional electric damage. Uh, there are some cases in which that can be quite useful. Um, we don't have really much of those at the moment, um, but oh, let's... Wow. Oh, 170 already. God, these are... Wow, these are powerful. These are the ones from that uh, big deposit next to Ragwell Lake. Also, before you're tempted to think that the auto heal up effect sounds good, it's not. It only affects the auto heal that happens automatically once you're out of battle. So unless you're very quickly going from one battle to another and can't just, you know, stand there and wait, useless. It makes it sound like you're going to heal passively in battle, which would be great, but it isn't that. Ah, you see there, we've got party support. So that happens basically for a party member that's not involved in crafting may offer party support. It's basically a... 
it's just a weighted thing based on their affinity with the other party that might occasionally hop in and do it. If they do so, they it's quite powerful. They increase one to three qualities by 10 to 20 points, which is quite a lot, actually. Um, so it can be real, real handy. Wow, this is absolutely mint. You're right, Ryan, that is absolutely mint, because that was quite a powerful agility gem we just made. Uh, these are all crap, but sure, why not? Um, we got... Agility of 8, that's not great. The, the second rank ones, it's weird, like, sometimes second ranks will not even be as good as, like, the first rank ones you can make, it's... Bizarre. But there's a lot of weird arcane shit that goes into gem crafting, as you've noticed. Bit of a complex process, to say the fucking least. Well, that's all the crafting we can do for now, um, and that is enough to level us up. Yes, you get experience from that. It's one of the things I really like about this game. You get experience from basically doing everything gameplay related, which is real nice. That gives us Heat Bullet from Sharla, uh, which releases a special ether bullet that increases the tension of the party. Can be handy if you are particularly in low tension. Um, can't say I use it a lot, probably will use it more than Tranquilizer, because Tranquilizer is just very situation and whether it's actually good at all, so... There we go. Uh, with that, let's go back to the refugee camp and do some side Oh no, I said I was actually going to equip some of those gems first, if they need it. Craft Stravaganza. There we go. Well, turns out everyone's actually already basically got the best gems we've got equipped, but it's always handy as we start getting more slotted gear as well. Uh, that either has gear with more slots or more gear with slots. Um, it'll be very handy to, um, to be able to have more options for gems, basically. Right, let's head to the refugee camp. And we're going to start with this woman here. This woman is Matriona. Me. Excuse me. Do you have a minute to talk? Do you know Pammer, the Nopon boy? He's been inconsolable ever since the day that Colony 6 was attacked. You see, he lost both his parents in the attack. So I want to do something for him. He really likes reading stories, and I want to give him a book. My creative skills start and end with drawing and painting pictures. However, Ewan, who fled here with us, is a fantastic storyteller. I was thinking of asking him to write the book for me. But it's not that easy for me to ask him myself. That doesn't sound good. I just want everyone to feel better. Although, cheering up Ewan is going to be a lot more difficult. I won't lie by saying I feel I understand what the kid's going through, but it just ain't right when a little kid is as sad as he is. I agree. Pammer and everyone else. Then you're looking at the best people for the job. We of all people know what it's like to have a home demolished. It's going Australian. Why is it going Australian? Ah. So you'll talk to Ewan for me? Please, take your time. Don't rush on my account. So, a thoughtful idea. Um, so we start by speaking to Ewan. So you'll help me? First, I'll let Ewan, know, let Ewan know I'd like his help with writing the book. Then, we'll take it from there. Oh, it's going to be so good if he agrees. No problem, leave it to me. That's right, we can handle it. So Ewan is over here in the back of the place. He's sitting down feeling sorry for himself. How's it going? You want me to make a picture book for Pama? And you want me to write the story for it? What makes you think I want to get involved in any of that? I'm not an author anymore. I'm nothing. I've decided that I'm never writing ever again. You don't give up, do you? I'll tell you what. If you want me to do this, I'll need something first. I'll need some ponio neck meat. The liquid connected from that meat makes the finest ink. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing makes an ink like horse neck does. Why not? Just go. You'll never find any, though. Just you try. Go on. I think I have a lot of that hanging around anyway. Just don't come come, in, come crying back when you get a kick in the backside. Yep, already had it from those five field ponios I killed as part of one of the monster quests when we first arrived at uh, the Bionis Leg. How's it going? What? You actually managed to get the ponio neck meat? Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, uh, well, I suppose I did promise. Okay, I'll write a story for the book. Let Matriona know. I underestimated you. And somehow, don't ask me why, I think my luck might be changing. So, with that, we can return to Matriona. Me. He'll do it? Oh, that's wonderful. That's fantastic news. I'm glad everything worked out. Olga told me what happened. He asked you to go and get Ponyo neck meat, didn't he? I can't believe Ewan would put you in danger like that. Talented as writer though he is, he can be very thoughtless sometimes. Rest assured, we'll work it out. Take this as payment from me, it's the least I can do. And so that nice and easily completes a thoughtful idea. This is, of course, the beginning of a series of quests, um, and starting to understand what the weird relationship between Matriona and Ewan and why they won't talk to each other is, and why Ewan, Ewan's a bit despondent at the moment. It's, as I say, quests in this game are not hugely interesting from a gameplay uh, thing, because they're either just do stuff you're already doing, like collect shit, defeat monsters, or they're basically just go here, talk to someone, go over here, talk to someone, stuff like that. 
What makes them interesting is that they're basically character pieces and they allow you to ex explore the relationships between characters, which is a really cool way of doing it. It ties in with all the concepts of like affinity and stuff like that in this game that makes this game... I'm going to go ahead and say unique for, for that, because I'm not a side quest person normally. I'm just like, oh, go and get some Beatles from Mr. Beeple Bopple. I don't care. Um, but the fact that it's like, experience the characters of this world and let it kind of breathe and feel like it comes to life. It's It's got a very Majora's Mask feel, which I suppose means it's probably not unique, but bloody good. And I'd like Majora's Mask, so obviously I would say that, but still, bloody good. So that gets us some quark armor that we already have, but that's not the main reason for doing the side quest. The main reason is now we can proceed. Ewan has weirdly teleported over here, but having done a dash of color, and oh, by the way, on my little quest visualizer, if a quest leads to another quest, that means it, that quest is a prerequisite. That should be obvious, but I figured I'd point that out anyway. Um, so now Ewan will offer us another quest. Hey, it's you guys again. You're just the people I needed to see. Um, I need to apologize. Sorry for how I acted before. Ever since the attack, I just haven't been myself. My attitude and my writing have been all over the place. I sit down to think and suddenly my mind turns to that day. All that running and I never really escaped that day and I never will. That doesn't sound good. Thinking of helping out, Shulk? Yeah, if you could help too, Charlotte, that'd be really cool. That sounded so fucking passive aggressive. Consumed by fear, I hid among a crowd of elders and children. Before I knew it, I was being led onto the evac ship. All while Gatto and the others made a stand until the very end. I was a selfish idiot. You need to stop being so hard on yourself, Ewan. Not a single person here hates you for the decision you took. Hearing that from you does make all the difference, Sharla. Maybe it is time to move on. But I'm feeling more positive now. I've once again feel the desire to put Quill to paper. I've written a few lines since Matrione gave me an idea. Things are a little awkward between us, but it's getting better. Which brings me to the favour I need to ask you. I need sour gooseberries to make up paints for Atriona. They'll make a nice splash of colour to the book. The thing is, she doesn't have any. No one around here does. I hate to ask, but do you think you should find some for me? So, collect four sour gooseberries on the Bionis leg. This is an interesting one. You're a lifesaver. Thank you ever so much. I know you can find them. I'll get back to my writing. We have been told about this quest because we've collected one sour gooseberry and when we collected it, we got a vision of, oh, that'll be enough for Matriona to make the picture book or something like that was what it said. So that's that's the really cool thing about, you know, um, the visions and how they interact with, um, with the gameplay in terms of collecting something in the game telling you, by the way, you probably want to hang on to this. Uh, anyway, there is, it's showing me where they are and basically I could sit around and just get collectibles blindly for quite some time. Um, but I'll just gather a couple of them around the place. Oh, while we're out and about, by the way, we haven't seen a Mount Torta before, which are really cool looking things, but also kind of horrifying and level 32 to my 22. So obviously I'm going to stay the fuck away from that. And with that, there is our fourth Sour Gooseberry, so let's take them back to Ewan. No doubt about it, those are Sour Gooseberries. I'll use these to prepare the ink. It won't take me long to mix up the paints. Wait here a moment. That's it, all done. This should be enough paint. Sorry to ask, but could you give the paints to Matriona? Um, I would do it myself, but I can't really face her right now. Please, it's best that you hand her over to her. Well, I'd better get back to my writing. Cool, I guess we'll finish off by giving that to Matriona. Oh, are they for me? A letter and some paints, and they're from Ewan. A pleasant surprise. I'll be needing these paints to draw the pictures for the book. How thoughtful of him. I spoke quite harshly of him earlier, but I see I spoke too soon. You and I will endeavour to make a wonderful book together. I want to show it to everyone when it's ready, not just to Pammer. Recently, that's how I feel. Those feelings encourage me to work hard. Give Ewan my thanks when you see him. And indeed, we then finish the quest by talking to Ewan. Matriona liked them? Really? I couldn't have done it without you giving me the dungeon I needed. Please accept this as a token of my appreciation. I'm glad everything worked out. With a quill in my hand and a whiff of ink in the air, I do feel alive again. I am truly grateful. And that completes a dash of colour. Thanks to you and newly found drive, he and Matriona's relationship is much improved. And we have a lime bangle for our efforts, and I have no idea if that's actually useful or not. Oh, that's actually quite handy. It's, it's, it's certainly decent on the... Well, it loses me the HP up, and it gives me blaze defense, and quite frankly, no enemies have tried to set me on fire so far, so I guess I'll ha hold off on that for now. Um, with that, we can end with one final quest here from Olga, which is... Oh dear, what am I going to do? Oh, it's you. Listen, I need to talk to you about something. 
I was a chemist in Colony 6, and that's why I tend to the sick here. But I've just realised Gorman's supply of medicine is running out. It's not looking like it'll last much longer. That doesn't sound good. That is quite a problem. You look like a bright bunch, so I know you know what's at stake. Without ingredients to make his tonic, Gorman will be in trouble. I need glowing wisp fluid, but it can only be gathered at night. I need to stay with Gorman, so I can't go and collect it myself. We can help you, just leave it to us. We're always happy to help someone who's in trouble. So you'll go and find the ingredients I need. It's not a very pleasant job. Are you sure you don't mind? So we need to get glowing wisp fluid from wisps on the bionis leg. And this is a really annoying one, because those sometimes take forever to drop. Or we can trade with Ewan, who is right here. Um, because he will just trade us a glowing wisp fluid for basically nothing. Um, so it only takes 600. So let's just pick a nice collectible that we've got a ton of. Hot tarot, why not? I was probably going to overtrade him. Nope, it doesn't matter. His overtrade value is clearly much higher than that. But cool, let's get all five glowing wisp fluids off him. Also, I love how this is medicine that apparently Gorman needs to fucking live. And Ewan is just sitting here with a seemingly endless supply of it in his pocket, just like, I'm going to hold on to this. You really are a selfish shit. I was thinking you were beginning to warm up a little bit, but but maybe you are still just, just a turd. Who knows? Right, let's finish this trading. And with all five of those gathered, we can just take him back to Olga. You've collected them all. Thank you so much. Oh, I haven't told you what remedy I'm going to make. I'll use the ingredients to make a potent anti-insomnia re remedy. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed this from Visualizer Top, but Gorman's only around at night, uh, so the man's clearly not sleeping great. Now all I need to do is get Gorman his medicine. I'm glad everything worked out. Right, it was well worth the effort. You did good out there, you lot. You have my thanks. And that completes emergency treatment. A nice simple one because Ewan's right there. And we'll hold it there at that point. Uh, this episode, well, we started off, you know, learning some stuff about um, Gado and the attack on Colony 6. Um, but next episode, we've been doing some kind of side stuff. And next episode, we're going to be continuing on with specifically with the arc with Gorman, not Gorman, uh, Ewan and Matriona and their picture book and seeing where that takes us. Hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much and good day.